I'm joined by Alex, Al Alice Huang, live from Burbank, California. She's a senior faculty associate in biology at Caltech's Division of Biology and Biological Engineering. Thank you for joining me. Now, there's a I'm lot of information here. and ongoing studies about COVID-19. Are there any new insights about vaccines in the works or into how this is being transmitted? Well, we now understand that the transmission is very similar to what we already know about common colds and influenza. Actually, when a person coughs or sneezes, there's a cloud about them saying that it really goes about six feet. And this cloud will carry droplets that contain virus. So one doesn't want to be very close to these individuals. So then how and effective are these school closures then and really limiting business and leisure travel at this point, considering that the cases are rising outside of China at a faster pace? Well, what happens when the transmission occurs is not just the sneezing and coughing, but it's also hands. When we touch our nose or our eyes or our mouth, uh, we contaminate our hands. And then the hands could touch a table or a doorknob. And these viruses that we know about that are similar to COVID-19 actually can stay around for a couple of hours and even as much as two days. So then someone else comes along and touches the same surfaces. And then the, they go and touch their own mouths or nose. And they might become infected. Now, in terms of businesses, obviously a lot of people in working in close conditions, what sort of precautions should businesses be taking to keep their offices clean and their employees healthy? The most important thing is really an individual responsibility. That is, that anyone who feels a scratchy throat or rising temperature, they should stay home. And it's important that we encourage employees to stay home if they don't feel well. And that way, they are really quarantining themselves at home. Now, there can be a lot of gray area for companies who aren't sure perhaps how to implement or enforce these measures in real time, or are perhaps worried more about losing productivity if they do have a lot of staff at home. How should they proceed? What sort of conversations should they be having? Well, they should encourage their employees to take the time off, and especially for hourly wage earners. They should not be uh, suffering from a loss of wages. They may have a uh, sick leave that they can take, or they can go on leave with pay. And this will help prevent the spread of the virus throughout the company. And we're certainly seeing it's not just obviously people at school. You also have a lot of students who are being asked to stay home. What sort of policies should be or are being put in place for those who can't make it to work or school? You know, we're living in an age in which we are terribly well con connected. And there's no reason that an individual, if they're well enough, could, cannot work from home. Um, and uh, we're now also seeing schools in which they're giving lessons uh, via the internet. So we must prepare. Rather than panicking, be prepared. Now, it can be a little bit awkward, obviously, if you see someone else coughing and sneezing. I mean, they ask us all to use common sense when it comes to public spaces and gatherings, whether it's, you know, at work or during our commutes. But everyone's concept of common sense can be a little bit different. So if you could just break down the precautions that people should be taking. There are two things, really, that one should remember, and that is social distancing, and the other is personal hygiene. Now, what do I mean by that? Social distance... We've already mentioned the six feet distance that one must have. Well, obviously, the further you're away from an individual and the less likely you are able to uh, catch the virus. And also, you're less likely to go around touching the same objects that that infected individual has already touched. So that's worth remembering when 
we do unnecessary travel or congregate in large groups of, of individuals. The other aspect, which is social, um, from social distancing, is personal hygiene. All right, thank you so much that, for your, oh, I'm sorry, please continue. Personal hygiene side is extremely important, and we don't know what we touch and where someone else has touched. And if we're in public areas, such as in um, subways or in restrooms that is public, uh, we end up having to watch out, but we can't always remember. So the best thing that one can do is to wash their hands. I don't mean just turning on the water and putting your hands in the faucet and then drying it, for, but to actually use soap and lather the hands well and use both the front and the back of your hands and in between the fingers. In fact, what the CDC suggests is that you should sing happy birthday twice, which gives you enough time to really do a thorough washing. Certainly a good, a good way to remember that. Thank you very much. Alice Huang, the Senior Faculty Associate in Biology at Caltech, the Division of Biology and Biological Engineering.